Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Rina and today I got you all a new tutorial about Clip Studio Paint, specifically how to transition from any art program to this one. As a former Paint Sai user, I struggled so much to be able to use anything else comfortably. I love size simplicity, but it always bugged me that I had to change programs when I wanted to do certain effects on my drawings due to size limitations. I actually got Clip Studio Paint several years ago, but I could never figure out how to properly use it to feel more at home, nor why so many artists seem to like it so much. My interest in the program grew bigger the more I learned about it. It's got so many cool features and the fact that there's a huge website where you can get dozens and dozens of brushes and resources to improve your art and workflow really caught my attention. Now that I'm a bit more experienced with it, I want to help anyone who's going through something similar. I will focus the tutorial specifically on transitioning from Sai to Clip Studio Paint, but everything I'll explain here today will still apply if you're transitioning from Photoshop, Medibang, EBS, or any other software. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to enable notifications so you don't miss out on any new video. You can also support me on Patreon to have early access to all my stuff weeks before I publicly post it. Without further ado, let's start! The first time you open Clip Studio Paint, the interface will look something similar to this. Clip Studio's got a couple of default workspaces, specifically designed for working on illustrations or comics. You can find them by going to Window and Workspace. But any of these is probably going to give you a headache if you're looking for a friendly environment that reminds you of your previous software. So let's see what we can do to redecorate this place to feel more at home. Like I said, I'll be mimicking size workspace in this video, but you can customize it to look like any other program with the same methods I'll show you. First of all, I know size appearance is very white, but you may want to switch the overall colors by going to File, Preferences, and Interface. On color, you can choose between light and dark mode. You can also adjust the intensity on this bar to make it even darker or lighter. Honestly, I'd recommend going for the dark one to lessen eye strain, but that is up to you. Next, we want the program to look as closely as Sai, in this case, as possible. Here's an example of what my Sai used to look like. You can see all my tools and important stuff are placed on the right, but on Clip Studio they seem to be located on the opposite side. What can we do to fix this? It's as easy as dragging panels around. So for example, we are going to click on the color wheel and simply move it to the other side. You can follow its position with the red mark. Below this panel, I want the toolbox. So we are going to do the same. Click on the small tab at the top and drag it to the other side. And we'll just keep doing this for all the rest of the panels. We can also adjust their size a little further by clicking and dragging their sides. What if there are panels we don't need? In my case, for example, I don't need the navigator or subview panels. What we are going to do is go to Window and then Locate Set Panel in the list. If we uncheck it, it will disappear from the view. What if there is a panel we only use sometimes, but you don't want to completely get rid of it? For example, the color slider. We can click on it, drag it to the side, but instead of placing it somewhere between the other panels, we can place it next to the color wheel. This will create a second tab in the same space. So now we can easily switch from one tab to the other in one simple click. 
All these panels can also be hidden to gain more space on the screen by clicking on this double arrow icon. Or you can also minimize them by clicking on the single arrow icon. The same way you can move the panels from one side to the other, you can also leave them floating around the screen and hide or unhide them with the Minimize icon. You can also put panels on the bottom. Another thing we can customize is the command bar. See all those little icons at the top? You can change them all and even customize their colors. To do so, we are going to right-click on it and go to Command Bar Settings. The commands are organized in six different groups that you can find by clicking on this pop-up list. You can pretty much create shortcuts for everything, from the usual save and load files icons to tools, filters, and more specific things like changing the brush size or switching between your main and secondary color. Really, I think you can make visual shortcuts for anything. It's worth spending time on this and think about the option you use the most. For this example, I'm going to make an icon that saves my files every time I click it. For that, we are going to choose Main Menu, File, and of course, Save. Now click on Add, and it will appear next in line. You can change its location just by clicking and dragging it to another place. You can also add separator lines to organize the icons in different groups. Lastly, we can change the color of the icon by right-clicking on it and then Icon Settings. Now that we're already on the shortcuts subject, I would also recommend adjusting the keyboard shortcuts, as some of them are probably different from what you are used to. So let's go to File and Shortcut Settings. This works exactly the same way as the command bar shortcuts. They are organized in different groups, and inside of them we've got the full list of possible shortcuts. Once you find the tool or option that you want, select it, and then go to Edit Shortcut. The space on the right will turn grey. Now it's time to press whatever key in our keyboard that we'd like to use for this specific action. If this combination is already in use for another tool, the program will let you know on this box at the bottom. You can set the same shortcut for different things to jump between tools or options pretty fast. Ok, now that our Clip Studio looks a lot more like Kurosai, there's one more thing we need to do to be able to work comfortably on this program. Let's open a new canvas, and then go to File and Pen Pressure Settings. Back in the days, I didn't know about this thing, which immediately changed my experience with Clip Studio. With this, you can adjust the band pressure for the whole program, which can make all the tools feel a lot less stiff and easier to control. All you need to do here is make some random strokes on the canvas. Try different things. Fast strokes, slow strokes, long, short, everything program will calculate the approximate values for you, which you can check later by pressing this button. If you still don't like how the pressure feels, you can set it lighter or harder with these buttons, or adjust it on the grid more precisely. If you're confused by how this works, don't worry, it's pretty simple. You can basically tell the program that whenever you press very lightly on the tablet, you want the lines to come out super thin, or not so thin, if that's what you're looking for. And the same way that when you press hard on the tablet, you want the lines to come out very thick, or not so thick, maybe. That depends on every artist. 
With all these things, you should be able to have a smoother transition to Clip Studio Paint now. Of course, it's still going to be difficult, since you don't have your precious brushes here. But for that, we've got different solutions. You can go to the Clip Studio Paint Assets page and browse for brushes that emulate the ones from your previous software. Some of them are pretty similar, but there's still a chance that you don't like how they feel. Then, I'd suggest checking my other video about brush customization. Once you understand the settings, you can surely recreate your fab brushes with a lot more ease. The same way you can get recreations of Psy brushes on the Assets page, you can also find workspaces that are similar to Psy, in case you don't feel like going through all the trouble of rearranging all the panels and commands by yourself. Although I really recommend taking your time to fully customize the program to your needs with what you've learned here today. And this would be all the advice I can give you for a smoother transition to this awesome program. You're still going to have to be patient, however. Learning about all the things you can do with Clip Studio Paint takes a lot of time. I'd personally recommend taking it one step at a time. Try starting small. Do only sketches at the beginning, or only line art, or shading, or effects, to get used to this new interface and the feel of the brushes. Thank you all so much for watching! If you'd like to help me keep bringing more and more tutorials, you can support me on Patreon. In exchange for your kindness, you'll have access to a lot of cool content from me, like sketches, early access to videos, and more. You can also subscribe to my channel and give the video a huge thumbs up, comment, and share. Keep practicing, and I'll see you soon! Bye-bye!